Well, everyone, the Peerless Assassin 140, what you saw at Computex this year, is finally here. And, and look, this is a cooler that has huge shoes to fill because the original Peerless Assassin, you all know it, it's an absolute legend right now. And look, while the Peerless Assassin family now encompasses something like, like five different subcategories, this 140 millimeter version, it's actually something unique. First of all, there's the obvious addition of a single 140 millimeter fan, which I know doesn't technically make this a 140 millimeter cooler since there's a single 120 millimeter fan on the front in order to maximize memory compatibility. But this is still a pretty chonky boy that's wider and deeper than the original, but it's officially only about a millimeter taller than the PA120. The biggest departure between the two though is actually the depth between both of the heatsink arrays. And that's an interesting move since it technically increases the static pressure required to move air from one end of the cooler to the other. Meanwhile, while thermal rates made some minor changes to the TLC12W fans to create the PA140's V2 version, its specs and output numbers haven't changed whatsoever. So it could be that thermal rate is simply counting on that 140 millimeter fans sheer size to increase overall airflow. But we're just gonna have to see if that sort of pans out in the performance results. But you know what else could give you a lot of performance? If you're looking for an AIO, check out this one from Montec. Montec with another insane value product, the Hyperflow ARGB AIOs, available in black or white, 240 or 360 sizes, with full platform compatibility and friendly tools along the way, that not only look gorgeous with pump lighting and matching blade illumination, but also performance that should satisfy with any hot silicon, thanks to high-speed fans, high-density fins on the rad, a good pump, and daisy-chain fans for easy cable management, all backed by the six-year warranty, so you don't have to worry. Check it out below. Anyways, jumping right back into the PA140, I want to talk about the fin arrays because you might not be able to see it right now on camera, but they are very, very unique to this cooler and they are completely different from anything that Thermalrite has done before. From the side, they look like an expanded version of the ones from the Frost Commander, while from face on, there's a distinct similarity between this cooler and the upcoming Royal Praetor. So look, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of like hallelujah moment within Thermalrite's engineering team when it came to designing one of these heat sinks and they said, look, this fin array is going to be going to all of our high-end coolers. So we should actually see it potentially permeate upwards and downwards within their entire lineup very, very soon. And while those towers do have cutouts to improve memory compatibility, the fact of the matter is some modules will still need some upwards fan movement, and that will increase the PA140's overall height. But other than the towers, the rest of the cooler is pure peerless assassin, with six six millimeter heat pipes that angle down into a nickel plated copper base. One other thing that's changed, and I know this is minor, but on the last assassin, I commented that the cooler and fan were two different shades of white. Well, this one, they're almost identical. Thank you so much, Thermalrite. And yet I also feel like there's a bit of a missed opportunity here. While other manufacturers like Noctua have started curving their heat pipes away from the GPU for more clearance, I mean, even the original PA120 did it, this one doesn't. So this looks like Thermalrite just slapped some bigger updated cooling towers onto six heat pipes and called it a day. So while we didn't encounter any issues whatsoever installing this into the systems that we're testing in, even with some GPUs with a thicker backplate, there still could be some installation issues in certain cases. So I can't take that out of the way completely simply because this is a wider cooler. Now, speaking of installation, that's one area that Thermalrite has made some really minor changes. With the AGHP Gen 4 system, there's now native support for LGA 1700. And no, the first Peerless Assassin didn't actually come with that. And there's also some color-coded standoffs for both Intel and AMD systems. So the installation process is a bit more straightforward than the original. They've also eliminated a lot of the additional washers from the previous kits, so there's just less stuff to search out for in the installation kit. So I guess the million dollar question in all of this is what is the PA140's price? Well, Thermalrite has sort of planned their lineup around it. First of all, the original Peerless Assassin is starting to make its way below the $30 mark. And look, that is an insane value. And after you see the rest of the results here, you might wanna actually jump on that one. Meanwhile, the 140 millimeter version in white and black will set you back about $40. Meanwhile, there is going to be an upcoming version that's a little bit cut down to $35, and the only difference for that one will be you don't get a solid color on the heat sinks. It's going back to those aluminum heat spreaders. 
Other than that, it's basically gonna be the same cooler with the same performance. So very much like those SE versions that we've seen from other heat sinks from Thermalright. And look, if you peer a bit deeper into the Thermalright lineup, this causes an even bigger log jam with just an endless number of air coolers all clustered within $20 of one another. But supposedly this is gonna be getting cleared up with the Royal Praetor series potentially replacing the Frost Spirit and Frost Commander lineups, while there's still gonna be some overlap in the Assassin and Phantom Spirit lineups. But in my conversations with Thermalright, one thing is completely clear. The PA140 isn't meant to be a D15 G2 killer. That'll be the the job of the Royal Praetor series. Supposedly it won't even beat the PA120 by all that much when both are running full tilt or under PWM conditions. What this larger assassin is meant to do is dominate its smaller sibling in decibel normalized conditions. That means it will offer better cooling at a given noise level. So ironically, or maybe not ironically, it almost seems like Thermal Wright has designed this cooler for us because our tests tend to favor coolers that do better under noise normalized conditions. We don't care what they do at full chooch factor and we really even less care about how they operate under PWM conditions. So with that in mind, let's sort of step back from actual performance testing first and talk about acoustics because what we're going to do now is listen to what this thing actually sounds like and also compare its fan curve to the original Peerless Assassin. So if we look at these two fan curves over here, it's pretty evident that Thermal Wright did exactly what they set out to accomplish. And that is to deliver better overall noise results than the PA120 while both coolers are operating at identical RPM levels. For example, the original Assassin runs at 39.6 decibels at 1100 RPM, while the PA140 runs at 38 decibels. You'll also see the real strength of the new cooler lies within a very narrow 1100 to 1300 RPM sweet spot. So it'll be really interesting to see how the original Peerless Assassin stacks up against the PA140 because there really isn't all that much difference between these two coolers other than raw cooling mass. So the first step in the performance journey is going to be Intel gaming testing. So let's add all the other coolers we're comparing this thing to and then plot where the original Peerless Assassin sits, which is right here. And it looks like that extra mass is really being put to good use here since there's a clear reduction in overall temperatures across every single decibel level, which makes this the best thermal right air cooler we've tested so far. There's a few other things too, like how there are are five different thermal right heat sinks here, all of which are within four degrees of one another. So while the PA140 is technically the best, it isn't all that much better than the PS120, Evo, Frost Spirit, or the original Peerless Assassin. Moving on to full core workloads, things switch around a bit with the Peerless Assassin 140 still getting better results than the PA120 and two Phantom Spirits, but the difference is next to nothing. At best, it wins by about two degrees, and at other points, it's a virtual tie. Meanwhile, it's narrowly beaten by the Frost Spirit V3. I guess I should also mention that under heavy all-core workloads, nothing, and I mean nothing, comes close to the D15 G2 with its HBC option. Moving up to a 153 watt load, and the results are pretty much identical as the last test. Basically, the PA140 joins a log jam of other thermal right coolers right around the same temperatures and across every single decibel level. The only exception is the older Peerless Assassin that's a bit further behind at lower noise, but then catches up to everything else. So at this point, it's looking like there's almost nothing to differentiate between the Phantom Spirits, Peerless Assassins, and the Frost Spirit. And as usual, there's really nothing to see temperature-wise when we unleash the power levels since every air cooler gets trashed and badly too. And moving deeper into things by focusing on clock speeds shows most of the thermal right coolers are again right around the same area. And that's both good news and bad news. On one hand, you can buy any of these things and be guaranteed good performance, especially for the price. But it also poses a serious question. Why even bother with all of these if they can't distinguish themselves in any unique way? So I guess let's move on to gaming on an AM5 system to see if this 
new cooler can distinguish itself in any way, shape, or form from the competition, or even from other thermal rate coolers for that matter. And starting with gaming, it looks like the answer to that is no. Absolutely not. I mean, sure, statistically, it's marginally better than the Peerless Assassin we've all come to love. But we're splitting hairs here, guys. It's essentially the same thing, and it even gets ever so narrowly beaten by the original Phantom Spirit 2. And moving towards full core workloads really doesn't change that situation either, with the PA140 once again trading blows with literally every other comparable thermal right cooler that's out there. Meanwhile, in this test, it's beaten by the Frost Spirit. And yet, I also have to draw your attention to the temperature axis here. Basically, every one of these coolers, other than the Liquid Freezer 3 and Dark Rock Elite, is within just three degrees of one another. A lot of this lack of variance from one cooler to another is simply due to how much thermal resistance gets introduced by the integrated heat spreader on AM5 CPUs, along with a lack of mounting updates from thermal rate. They are not using an offset option here. But as heat loads increase with the 7700X, coolers with more heat pipes like the Phantom Spirit and Phantom Spirit Evo seem to have a small edge at lower noise levels while the PA140 picks up steam at 40 decibels and above, likely due to its raw size advantage over some of the 120 millimeter coolers here. The ironic thing is that even as we move higher on the heat front into dual CCD designs like the 7950X, the PA140 doesn't do any better. As a matter of fact, pretty much every thermal right cooler is right on the bleeding edge of thermal throttling, while the only air cooler to step a bit beyond that point is the D15G2 LBC with its offset mount. And I think all this backs up what I said in the D15G2 review. Launching and relaunching a bunch of coolers that are essentially the same thing is not going to lead to a drastic jump in performance. It, it, it just can't happen in the air cooling field right now. What we need to be looking at right now is simply that Thermal Right adding more coolers to their current lineup is leading to nothing, nothing but confusion. In my eyes, there's two options going forward. Manufacturers either need to start finding unique paths to give them an advantage like Noctua did with different base convexities and mounting types, or they need to incorporate more exotic and unfortunately expensive technologies like 3D vapor chambers. So is the Peerless Assassin better than its little brother? Well, on Intel systems, the bigger cooler has a small, sometimes infinitesimal advantage in noise normalized scenarios, but it does still technically win. On AMD though, it's a statistical tie, basically a big nothing burger. And that leads to a very serious question for the PA140, is it's basically at most two degree temperature advantage versus the original Peerless Assassin, really worth its increased price and not only that, potential compatibility issues because of its increased width. In my opinion, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, unless you absolutely need to have a solid black or white cooler, the standard Phantom Spirit will give you identical cooling performance in a smaller form factor, and it'll probably cost you a few bucks less too. And it might sound like I'm being very critical of this cooler, but I also love the fact that it gives users simply more options to choose from when it comes to air cooling, at least options that don't cost a bloody fortune, because if anything, we still have to celebrate the fact that this is a $40 air cooler. That, that's, that's just such still a breath of fresh air for everyone. But ultimately, what I'm hoping this leads to is the path forward for Thermal Right to simply clean up their lineup a little bit. I'm hoping that this, the Peerless Assassin series as a whole, as well as the upcoming Royal Praetor series, allows them to sort of like pare down the amount of offerings that they have and really segment them into certain performance categories rather than all of this crazy overlapping. But we're just gonna see how that plays out in the rest of the year. So anyways, I'm Mike with Hyrule Canucks. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm going to see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.